In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create two different types of timers. The first one up here in this green box is a countdown timer where you set some date in the future that you want to count down to. So let's say we're currently at the end of November. I want to count down to the end of January of next year um, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So this now has triggered my timer. Uh, counting down to that date, I can see the number of days, hours, minutes, and seconds uh, remaining until we reach that date. The second timer we're going to create is a timer that counts up, so like a stopwatch. We'll click a button to start the stopwatch just like that, and it's just going to start counting up. Um, both of these features can be built on and, and uh, expanded in a number of different ways depending on what you need, but I'm going to show you the basic clock functionality that you're building in directly into your app. We're not working with any kind of JavaScript or code whatsoever. This is pure bubble logic um, to create uh, these clocks here, these timers. So the first thing that you're going to need is to create a custom state. So I'm going to go to the property editor for my page. My page is called clock and I'll open up the inspector element to uh, view my custom states. So I have two states here. Um, this first one, which I've labeled current date and time, which is a date type is going to apply to both of our clocks. I'm going to start with the first one a bit more here, so um, we'll go through that and then we'll go through the stopwatch functionality later, but just to let you know that this state does apply to both of them, so uh, I've labeled it current date and time. Why? Because the value of this state is going to be um, the current date and time every single second. We're going to update this value every single second. So I'm going to leave the default blank, but we'll go into the workflows and we're going to create, this is um, a, a workflow event that runs every single second. So the way you get to that one is under general. And then there's one called do every five seconds. When you select it, you can actually change the interval um, for when this will trigger. So I just change that to one, just manually type in the number one there. And now this will run every single second. Um, unless you add a condition to it, which you know could potentially pause it or stop it if you wanted. Um, I have it kind of running freely. Uh, the only action that this is going to do is update that custom state, current date and time. Okay, and the value is going to be current date and time. I just tried to stay as literal as possible so it's easy to remember and understand when you're building it. So that means every single second this is changing um, to you know the current second. Uh, and we're going to use this in a subtraction so that every single second we're subtracting by a new value and that way this is like a live um, timer that, that uh, displays in real time. So now that we've got our custom state set to our page, current date and time, and we have our workflow that updates that value to the current date and time, now we can create the logic to perform the math, the subtraction uh, involved for each component of this clock display that we have here. Okay, Now, the way that I've set this up, this is one single text element, and I've strung together all of the calculations for each component. You can actually see my colon um, uh, characters in between. So this first piece here is all for the day element, then you have the colon, then the next piece is for the hour element, then the minute, then the second. They're, they're largely, um, the expressions are largely the same, it's just slight variations in you know some of the math uh, because we're working with different intervals obviously. So you can break this up if you want. Um, I did it to keep it easy in one element, but if you wanted to have separate text elements for each component, that's totally up to you. And you can also do this in um, inputs as well, because these are each numbers. They are number values. So if you wanted to do some kind of a further calculation on those numbers on another part of the page, you can do that. So let's break this down. I'm actually going to add a text element here so that we can look at them one by one so that it's not so overwhelming with all of this. Um, I'm going to copy the day expression and paste this into 
my text expression here. So we're just looking at one component. This is the expression for the day element. Now, if you're familiar with my YouTube tutorials, you know that I usually build these things from scratch and take you through it in the video, um, building from the ground up with a blank canvas. With this particular one, because we've got a handful of you know expressions, I wanted to have it pre-built so that we can dissect them one by one so that it's clear for you. But if you are interested in a much more in-depth breakdown of each of these items, I have a fuller written tutorial as a part of my VIP membership. And if you're interested in getting many more of those full in-depth written tutorials, take a look at the link below. There's a lot more information about that membership. Okay, so we're building expressions here that have to in integrate into a clock format, right? Because the countdown is not in a total number of seconds or a total number of minutes. It's a clock that has the, each component has to work together. So the highest number of seconds is going to be 59, highest number of minutes is going to be 59, and so on. So we have to convert each component so that it works within that clock format. So with the day, um, I am taking the parent group state, which by the way, is the date pickers value. You don't necessarily have to do it like this where you're um, using a group to reference the date picker, but I went ahead and did that just for design purposes. Usually I have things grouped anyway, uh, so it was easy for me to um, just pull from the date picker uh, reference in the group. Uh, so the group type of content is set to date and the data source is just that picker. So the expression here is parent group's date, in other words, the date picker's date, minus our current date and time. And this is pulling from the custom state value. And we're using a custom state because that's going to allow that date and time value to update every second. If you were just to use the standard current date and time value here, that's actually not going to update in real time for you. It's going to be a static single point in time. So that's why we're doing the custom state where and the workflow where it updates every second. So parent group state, which is our input, minus the constantly updating current date and time will give us a new value, that subtraction alone, a new value every single second. We're going to format that uh, subtraction as seconds. So this is a total number. The, the entire uh, uh, difference between now and this date translated to seconds. And then we have some um, math operations to convert that number um, in the day format for the clock uh, display. So we're going to divide seconds by 60, by 60 again, then by 24, and take the remainder of dividing that value by 365 and then subtracting by 0.5 and rounding the number to zero. So I will have these expressions in the description below so that you can copy them. Um, but this is essentially the format that we're using. We're taking our initial subtraction, converting it to seconds, and we will be converting to seconds for all components, and then applying a, uh, a couple of divisions, and then manipulating the remainder of that uh, value and you know rounding it to zero so that we have nice whole numbers um, for each component here. So. You can see this is for the day. If I go back into my full string here, for the hours, um, we have uh, one less division to do. So with the day, we're dividing by 24. With the hours, we're dividing by 60. Uh, with the minutes, one less even more. So we've only, we're only dividing by 60 once. And then with the seconds, we're not dividing by anything. Um, and you can see that with the modulo operation, we're using a different um, uh, variable there. So we've got 365 for the day, 24 for the hour, uh, 60 for the minute, and 60 for the second. So again, these are going to be linked below. And if you want you know, a much more broken down uh, written tutorial, you can check out the link to the VIP membership where you can find that, where you'll be able to access that tutorial. So now that we have, I'm going to remove that one. So that's, that's the expression that will perform those calculations every single second. And so in real time, you get this clock. Um, and obviously, these text labels here are just you know, to label what the component stands for. So I have a um, condition on this text so that when the date picker's value is empty, I'm going to leave this at 0. 
technically in the back end, this is still happening. Um, and I made it that way because I have both of my clocks on the page, so I don't want any, uh, any of them to overlap each other or prevent the other one from running. But if you were to just have this clock, you could also have a condition on this workflow as well so that it only runs when the date picker value has um, a date in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose another date again, 15th of January and a time, and this will now enable my clock to display. Okay, now for the timer, the timer is very similar, but we're obviously doing a subtraction in the other direction so that it counts up. Okay, now we have one additional custom state that's needed for the timer. I'm gonna go back to my clock page, open up the inspector, and I have this custom state here. Now this state is just for this timer. We're not working with the start custom state for the clock up here. So start is just a date value as well. Now what start does is set the point in time where we want to begin the timer. So we're gonna be subtracting in the opposite direction. We're going to take the current second and then subtract that by the start as opposed to the other way around um, up here. So I have this button triggering our start. If we go to the workflow for this button, this will set state of the current date and time for start. So uh, this is, it's like, it's ground zero for your timer, right? Every time you start the clock all over again, we're gonna reset the clock to zero and it will count up from there. So that's all you need to do workflow wise is the button sets the state of the start custom state to the current date and time and our logic with the text now is uh, mostly the same. All of the division and, and uh, the remainder and all of that, those are the same. It's just your initial subtraction that needs to be reversed. So for the parent group date in this case, uh, we are going to set it to the clock's current date and time. Okay, uh, That is the one that's constantly changing. So we're gonna take that minus the start. This is the static one. You set it once and that won't change and it's just gonna continue to count up because it's always gonna be subtracting right now minus your, your static start date. And you'll apply that to the rest of them as well, right? So date minus clock start for all of them. And that way we have a clock counting in the other direction. So I'm gonna hit start. Now we have a new start date and time which was you know, set in place seven seconds ago, eight seconds ago, right? And so our subtraction um, is working every second. Uh, and if I hit the button again, it's going to update the custom state of our start value. So it'll start back at zero because for one second, the start date and time will be the same as the current date and time. So I'll click that right now. Looks like it thought for a second it was all negatives for a moment. And now we're, we've restarted the clock. So check out the description below. There's a lot more information so that you can get this working, uh, but hopefully this allows you to create really cool clocks and timers and stopwatches for your application. Thank you so much for watching.